And welcome back. Now, the breaking news yesterday was, of course, that Malusi Gigaba resigned as Home Affairs Minister. And in a statement, President Cyril Ramaphosa said he accepted Gigaba's resignation. Meanwhile, Transport Minister Bladen Zimande is to act as Home Affairs Minister. Gigaba had, of course, been under fire for many issues, ranging from lying under oath to his relationship with the Gupta family, the creation of a sex tape, the Fireblade saga and the list goes on. And to help us analyse all of this, uh, we joined in Durban by Sandy Leswana, who is a lecturer at the Witt School of Governance. And here in studio in Johannesburg with me is uh, Professor Susan Boyson, who is Director of Research at the Mapungubwe Institute for Strategic Reflection. Uh, to both of you, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Sakina. Thank you, Sakina. Professor, let me start with you. So, uh, Malusi Gigaba, this is a guy who, by all indications, had presidential aspirations, was seen as potentially president of the Republic of South Africa somewhere down the line. And now he has resigned under a cloud, of course. Uh, but what does this say about the succession planning within the African National Congress moving forward? Yes, you know, Malisi Gigaba, his generation, they were really part of this crown prince, brigade of crown princes, and there are not too many princesses inside there. But they have been pitched at that level for quite a long time. And of course, 2017, Nazareth came in between. But still, these younger people were still assumed to be rising into leadership for the next generation but that is now so no-go territory for them we probably should accept that Malusi Gagaba do not see him out as, uh, himself out as permanently out and that he still can harbor those kinds of aspirations but it will be an incredible baggage for him to shed the repertoire of wrongdoings poor judgment ego above all that have marred his track. The problem for the ANC, however, is that even in that modestly young 47, late 40s age, age range, there are not too many contenders. And so the ANC would have to take very much care about compiling the electoral lists for next year's elections if those are not more or less signed and sealed already to be sure that they have evidence of that new, a new generation, not just the old women and men in those pound sheets. Mm. Uh, Sandy Leswana, so Melissa Gigaba had quite a bit of cloud cover over his head, but was he pushed or did he jump and does it even matter at this stage? I, I, don't, I don't think it even matters at this stage, Sakina. Uh, first of all, when you look at the situation and how the DA took up the issue, uh, because the DA played a major role in getting rid of Gigaba. Uh, the court had already determined that Gigaba had deliberately lied under oath, and uh, the DA simply pushed him over, really, by taking that to the public protector uh, to determine the implications, whether he had uh, violated the, um, the Executive Ethics Code and the Executive Ethics Act. So once that is, it was already obvious what is going to happen then, Cyril had to take action. He could not do what Zuma used to do and simply ignore the recommendations of the public protector because those are directive, they've got legal power. So Cyril had no choice, both of them had no choice. So uh, the DA got rid of, of Malusi Kekaba. Which is very interesting, Prof. I want to hear your view on that as well. And also considering what we are hearing about um, Malusi Gigaba meeting with uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, mm -hmm. allegedly, even going as far as presenting a 30-page slide presentation, we are that. told. Uh, all of this is in the realm of allegation, of course. But it would seem mm -hmm. as though he did go to the president, try to make a case, try to smooth it out. And um, he mm -hmm. is, of course, also considered to be a Zuma man um, yes. in this 
instance. So the balance mm. of forces within the ANC, especially mm. in the lead up to an election year, how does all of that play out? This was such an incredibly, not just difficult, but complex resignation, complex step in this whole big process. The Zonda Commission, the Gupta allegations, of course, loom. And Lucy Gagaba, I have no doubt, will feature very, very strongly in, in all deliberations, much of the deliberations of Zonda Commission going forward. He has been mentioned around every corner. I have little doubt that he would have to appear there in order to give a better and fuller picture. One would then imagine that if he had feel felt been feeling aggrieved by his departure from cabinet, then he could very much be a loose cannon in a commission like that. However, because he probably still has believe it or not, but presidential aspirations for some time in the future, he will probably try to be very careful in the commission there. But we have seen already the succession of people falling on their swords. And the question is whether his type of evidence, which I no doubt will be forthcoming, could be a further trigger in that process for more high profile people to go. The key seems to be do not lie about the Guptas, but the kind of deals that have been going on there and what we know, Malusi Gagaba, in the realm of allegations, have been said to be, have been involved in, and we see so much circumstantial evidence, there is almost no way that he can speak the full truth in situations like that. So the problem's getting compli more complicated Nothing ha much has a little problem has been resolved mm. yesterday with a resignation, but a range of big problems are only complicating and deepening. And Sandy Leswana, uh, there are many questions that still loom because um, one wonders whether there was any deal struck with President Ramaphosa uh, that led to this particular resignation and what that possibly could have been. And also, as uh, Professor Boysen uh, points out, uh, people who have resigned before Malusi Gigaba uh, for lying about you know, their ties in particular to the Gupta family, and most of them, when they resigned, have also resigned as members of parliament. Is Malusi Gigaba likely to walk that same path? Yes, absolutely, Sakina. I think that uh, the, the departure of Gigaba, from my point of view, is a technical one. It's technical in the sense that if you've allowed something to go to court, like he has allowed this fire blade issue to go to court and a judge actually says, he deliberately lied, he violated the constitution, and then the public protector comes back and gives direct, a clear direction back to the president and so on. The likes of EFF and the DA are going to bring this up and disqualify him in parliament. So the, he, has got, he is going to leave parliament without a doubt, but uh, certainly the ANC being the ANC, and Ramaphosa being Ramaphosa, they are going to find some accommodation to give him a living uh, for the next three to five years. And then maybe five years later, he will resurrect again. You agree with that, Prof? Yes, I think he is on his way out as parliament. He cannot as they remain there. The level of accountability is going to be too high for him to live up to, I believe. And we can see the parliamentary statement yesterday, a parliamentary caucus really taking leave of him. Sounds if he had resigned yesterday, I believe he will. Speaking of accountability, what accountability are we talking about? Uh, you know, if we just hone in on a simple matter of a sex tape and, um, you know, similar things that have happened to other politicians, uh, does that really matter? Does the South African electorate really care about these things? And do the politicians themselves care? Professor? I think so. electorate do, does care, do care, definitely. It reflects on the image of the party and the credibility of the party. Is anybody, are people in government still being taken seriously? Accountability on, on delivery and on policy implementation, that is terribly thin anyway. So the ANC in circumstances like that really need every bit of personal credibility of their leaders in order to gain more general credibility. Just your final thought on accountability, um, Sandy Leswana. 
The, the issue of accountability, the problem that they have, particularly amongst the middle classes, uh, is that people are very worried that the ANC does not adhere to the Constitution, and that has been our tradition uh, uh, that we've noticed over the years, that the ANC doesn't stick to the Constitution. The ANC even struggles to stick to its own Constitution, running its own affairs. So they've got a very, very long way to actually build themselves into an institution that people believe adheres, plays by rules, the rule of law, and that type of thing. So, but uh, for the time being, in the shorter term, five to ten years, they'll still win elections or be in power one way or the other. But as time progresses, this is gonna, this is gonna hurt them. This, this lack of accountability, inability to adhere to the constitution of the nation, of, South, of the Republic of South Africa, and also their inability to stick to their own constitution. Some of these people like Kikaba may have been disciplined long, long ago by the ANC itself. Right now, it is not the ANC that is getting rid of Kikaba. It is the DA, basically, if we were to reduce it to, to, to its elements. Uh, the ANC has not done anything to discipline Kikaba at this point in time. Well, well thanks to our analyst, uh, Sandy Leswana, and Professor Susan Boysen here in our Joburg studios chatting about um, Malusi Kikaba's resignation. And by their account, he should also be a goner as far as being a member of parliament is concerned sometime soon. With that, apologies, going to news slightly late. Leanne Manis standing by with that.